Hello all you beautiful people and welcome to episode 3 in my build series for the Beskar Mandalorian. Now in this episode we're going to be covering the cape, which, I mean, sounds easy enough, but it provided me some unique challenges. So I hope that by watching this video, I can help you guys avoid some of the pitfalls that I did. With that said, let's get right into it. So the first thing we need to do is get a better idea of what we need to make. So for that, we're going to look closely at some reference images. And here's one that I really like. It is really well lit, so we can see all the texture and the details of the cape. Now if we take a closer look at the cape, you can see it's pretty textured. It has a lot of little bumps. I don't know. I, I don't know how to describe it. It's not silk. It's not sheen. It's got some weight to it, and it's got a rough texture to it. Now after checking out some of the build forums, I found that many people agreed it is a black boiled wool. I've never heard of boiled wool before this. I don't know if they stick it in a pot of boiling water to get this texture, but it looks exactly like what we need. So to get the raw material for the cape, I went to Mood Fabrics. They have a nice black solid boiled wool. They sell it by the yard. It's $30 a yard, and I ordered two yards because I'm six foot tall, and I figured that the cape doesn't really need to touch the ground, so it doesn't have to be as tall as you are. Here I am unboxing the fabric, getting my first look at it, and I was really impressed with the quality of the fabric, so I definitely recommend Mood Fabrics for the cape. To my pleasant surprise, the fabric was wider, so I was actually able to get two capes out of this one piece of fabric. So now we're ready to start cutting the fabric to size. Now when figuring the width of the cape, you want to do your shoulder width plus about 12 inches. For me, this was about 30 inches or directly down the middle of our cape. So that made the cutting pretty easy. Now we also want to cut a slot for the neck. So for that, we're going to cut about 30 centimeters down the middle of the fabric. That's how far we want to go, and we want to cut like a extended circular pattern with like straight edges so that we can drape it over our shoulders and drape it around the front of our chest. So the cut is going to be 30 centimeters deep and about 12 centimeters wide. So we figure six centimeters on each side of our center cut, and then we will cut out the pattern for our head. I'm not too worried for the total length of the cape since that's something that should be easily fixable and I want to wait until I have the boots on to see how tall I am in those before I trim the cape to size. So for now it's going to be a little bit longer than it needs to be. So here's the cape resting on the shoulders of the mannequin. This is going to give us a nice working surface so we can figure out how the cape is going to lay and how we're going to do the pleats. Now the pleats are just how we're going to lay the cape so that it has the nice wrinkled look and doesn't move too much. I originally just tried to freehand it and it ended up looking horrible. So I'm just going to link the tutorial thread that I used in the description. It is on the Mandalorian Din Djarin Costumers Guild. It is a group on Facebook and it's really a great resource if you're wanting to build your own costume. The people on there are very helpful and there are some very well thought out tutorials. So through this I'm just adding the pleats into the fabric and then pinning them in place for us to glue them together in the future. I'm going to be using some E6000 to hold the pieces together, but I would definitely recommend sewing it if you can, or if you're able to. I, uh, I don't have a sewing machine and I am really clueless about it, so I would just rather glue the pieces in place. One of these days I'll learn how to work a sewing machine, but for now, my fragile male ego can stay intact. And really, I'd love to try and explain all the different pleats that you do, but really just check out that post in the description. It's got like 15 images that show you step by step all the pleats you need to add, and it's really great. Big shout out to Frederick Just for posting this. So like I said, I'm going to be using E6000 to hold the pleats in place. I'm going to apply just a light string of it and then hold it down with some clamps. The E6000 actually cured faster than I expected. Maybe it has different cure times with fabric, but it holds it all together in place pretty well. I did have to use a lot of clamps though to keep it in place and to make sure that the fabric was well enough together. So now that the glue is cured, we need to figure out a way to attach it to the chest. And for that, I'm going to be using some more Velcro. You can already see I added a little piece of Velcro from my first attempt with the cape, but it's going to sit right above the Velcro we used for the chest plate, since the cape needs to be tucked right underneath the chest. So I'm just going to add a long strip of Velcro right above our existing piece, and then add the opposite side of Velcro to the cape itself. I'm going to use some more E6000 to hold that Velcro onto the cape, since the stickiness doesn't really stick too well to fabric. So we need something to help reinforce it. So now that the glue is cured for the Velcro, we can see how it looks draped over itself. As you can see, our right side needs to go all the way across the chest, with the left side drooping over the shoulder and covering up the end of the fabric from the right shoulder. Now that looks pretty good on the mannequin, but I wanted to try it out for myself to see how it felt. So we'll undress the mannequin and put the flight suit on so we can test the cape along with the chest armor. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, 
I might end up connecting the two sides actually and making it like one solid piece that I just pull over my head. I haven't decided yet, but that should be an easy thing to do. And as you can see, the chest covers up the bottom of the cape very nicely. Like I said earlier, I'm not too worried about the length of the cape. I know that it's too long right now, but I don't want to cut it until I have the boots on to see how tall I am in those. When we make the jetpack, we'll have to be able to swoop the cape over to the side so that we can get the jetpack out, and I feel like that's going to work pretty well. I'm really happy with the fabric. I think it looks very true to form, and this is probably, well, most definitely what they used in the TV show, so we know that it's very accurate. I might end up tattering the cape a bit, but that goes along with cutting it too short. I don't want to tatter up the bottom if we're going to have to just cut it shorter anyway. For now, I'm really happy with how it turned out, and I'm glad to have another piece of the armor set done. Stay tuned for the next episode. We've still got a lot of work to do, and it's really crunch time. We've got just a few more weeks until the first episode comes out, so I hope you guys stick around, and I hope to see you again in the next video.